So class, welcome to week three, January 25th. I'm uh, going to talk about tra tractor safety and operations. I'm going to go over a little bit um, safety stuff, um, some statistics, and kind of work into some rules. Yeah, some rules, talk about the discussion. Um, so this is for February 1st, our lab <clears throat> coming off of trailer towing um, and tie downs. What I'll probably end up doing, um, kind of recording this before our lab on Monday, the 25th. So we're supposed to get some rain, not exactly sure how much trailer towing and what not we're going to be able to do so i'll probably maybe bring those the trailer uh the, the truck and the trailer back um for the first the february 1st lab so we'll have some people to be able to do that and um work on the tractor operations um so during the tractor operations we're going to we got some uh, gravel out there got a pile of gravel might have a pile of dirt to work on scooping up some stuff uh, maybe do a little bit of light grading um, so we got a couple things uh, planned for operating the tractor. We'll get started on tractors um, now. So tractor safety, uh, OSHA requires employers to provide their employees some things. So as you are a manager or an owner, <clears throat> there are standards that you are required as an employer to provide for your employees. Uh, the standard rollover protection structure, we'll kind of go into that. That's the safety bar that goes over the top of the cab or where you sit. Um, you know, that is something that's been in place on tractors, I think, and I got it in the slides here, I think 1976, something like that. So that's standard. Uh, every tractor should be built with that. Um, that is also something that can be taken down. Um, and there are instances where taking it down is appropriate, um, but then there's also some safety protocols that you want to make sure you're doing when you take them down as well. We'll go over that. Um, you're supposed to provide a standard seat belt, uh, protection from the tractor fluid spillage, uh, protection from sharp, sharp surfaces, and any training, hands-on training from an experienced operator. So those are some things that you are supposed to, as an employer, be responsible for. Um, and can be held accountable for in case of an accident. So though al although today's tractors are s the safest ever, they are still involving in many an accidents. So there's many accidents that still happen. Statistics show that most machinery related accidents occur to human negligence. So these er errors include improper or lack of machinery maintenance, taking shortcuts to save time, ignoring warnings, failure to follow safety rules and failure, failure to read the operator's manual. Um, you know, a little bit on that. Um, you know, I think that that kind of says what it's supposed to say. The human negligence negligence is is the main culprit. Um, so that that that's on us as owners, on on managers. Um, you know, from that that standpoint, you know, we, we've talked about before, right? You you as an employee, you as an individual. You know, take care of yourself. Watch out for, for yourself. So just paying attention to these things, knowing these things, understanding these things is 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 step is step one and can alleviate a lot of the uh, accidents that occur. So no one deliberately has a tractor accident, just like any other accident for that matter. Uh, but study has shown uh, that 50% of total farm fatalities in, involve tractors. So of those tractor accidents, overturns have the highest fatality rate. A seven-year study of tractor-related deaths showed that the 2,500 reported deaths, 45% were caused by tractor overturns. There's a um, got a little um, statistics of stuff, and then you know kind of show you about the tractor overturn uh, here in a second. So tractor deaths, um, you know, what what is what what happens on that tractor death? 45% um, are overturns. Um, then you go from a fall to a run over. So you can fall off the tractor, you can get run over by the tractor, you can get crushed by the tractor, 
uh, entanglement uh, is kind of uh, you get caught up in it uh, usually if you're getting entangled in something that's usually on one of the attachments within the tractor um, and then 15 or other so you know overturn fall and run over uh, I don't want to say they're all the same thing but they all are related in the fact of you were probably in a, in a spot um, that you shouldn't be in um, that's probably a little too risky um, you know you should maybe stop and try to figure out a way out of that out of that area um, you know the other aspect is, is it doesn't take long for you to overturn uh, a piece of equipment so you know I'll, I'll get to that in a second but you know you need to be aware of your abilities on a tractor on any on any piece of machinery for that matter um, that if you're going up a hill on a side slope um, digging something very large whatever the case is know, know your limits as an operator uh, also know the limits of what that tractor can probably do uh, because there's not a lot of time for reaction uh, when you get into a bad spot so the rollover protective structure that's the rollover thing, kind of like a roll bar, if you think of a, a Jeep or something along that line, same, same type of thing. goes over you as the um, person operating sitting in that tractor seat. Uh, a seat belt, a rollover bar, protective cabin could have prevented almost all of the deaths. Because of this, the Department of Labor has established the rollover protective structure standards. Um, the standard requires that all tractor manufactured after 1976 must have the rollover protective structure so that's kind of what I said before all the tractors now have them they are a breakaway system so you can you can lay it down um, that way if you know you are going under a tree um, most of the time it's under a tree tight space could be a tunnel of some sort you can lay that down drive under it put it back up that type of thing to where it doesn't uh, it doesn't hit um, when that, that being said, when you lay that thing down and that tractor overturns, there's nothing to protect you from getting crushed by that tractor, falling out, whatever the case is. So when it's down, it doesn't do its duty. Um, so that's kind of why, um, you know, all those that were preventable, you know, would have been prevented um, with, that, with that rollover protection device up in its proper position. So the rollover protective structure standard um, requires that employees receive the following training. Um, so as you, as we go through some of these things, as you work in the in the field, um, you know, be aware these are these are types of um, things that um, your managers, your owners should should go over with you. Uh, seat belt seat belts must be worn when operating the machinery with the rollover protection device. So. If you have your rollover protection bar up and your seatbelt off, which the tractor more than likely will still operate, some don't, but most most do, um, and you tilt that tractor over, you flip that tractor, you're going to get thrown out. So having that roll bar above you isn't going to do anything because you still have the um, possibility of getting crushed one way or another if you, you know, are lucky enough to jump out on the right side then you might be okay but that's not what you want to try to do um, and then we'll get to it as well if that rollover protection device is down don't put your seatbelt on that way if that tractor rolls over you have the ability to get out if you don't and you have your seatbelt on now you're trapped without the rollover protection above you and now you're just you're, you're trapped you're, you're gonna get crushed you're gonna get pinched you're gonna get whatever on that aspect so if you have it down don't put the seatbelt on that way if it flips the tractor rolls whatever the case is you have the ability to get out to try to save yourself um, the things to kind of keep in mind so avoid driving deer um, avoid driving near ditches and holes very rough ground over stumps over large rocks those are the types of things that gets the tractor uneven in an awkward spot and it just it doesn't take long um, when the when the tractor for, for a tractor to flip uh, drive at the approach and, and think of think of this because it's coming up how, how long do you think it takes for a tractor to flip 
How long do you think it takes? Um, is it, I mean, do you know, can you feel it, and it's just like a slow motion type thing, and you know you're going to be able to avoid it, or how long do you think it takes for a tra tractor to flip? Um, just hold, hold the thought. Uh, drive at the appropriate speed for the job, the terrain, um, kind of what I was saying earlier. Know your know your standard know your ability as an operator. If you're not comfortable on that thing, don't drive that thing at full throttle. Um, whatever the case may be, right? Don't don't drive it full full bore straight ahead. Um, know know your capabilities of an operator. Um, stay off steep slopes. Watch where you're going. Um, other people don't have them ride with you. Um, operate the tractor smoothly. No jerking motions. Uh, hitch only to the draw bar and the hitch points. Uh, and the tractor, when the tractor is stopped, set the brake securely. So I always use the rollover protection um, device in the seat belt. So the rollover protection structure uh, do not protect, prevent rollovers, but are 95% effective. Um, so if you have a foldable, that's what I'm saying by it's retractable, it can lay down, whatever the case, foldable, good word, uh, keeping the up position and always use a seatbelt. If you fold it down, do not use your seatbelt. That's what I was saying before. Um, the rollover protection device in the seatbelt assures that you will stay in the protective zone. So when you have the seatbelt on, the rollover protection device above your head, and you roll, that bar above you will hold you in, in that protective zone. When that rollover protection device is down, you want to not have your seatbelt on so you can get out of the way potentially get out of the way. Um, if you have that on and that rollover protection device is down, you are trapped and there is nothing to protect you from being crushed above your head. That rollover protection device is, is folded down. So a little familiarity, a um, couple of different things. So the rollover protection device, see the, 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 um, the, the, the top shade, that's kind of what we call it. Um, what are they calling it? Um, uh, they don't even have it. So, you know, sunshade that's on the top, this bar that goes up on, the, on both sides has a connection in the P, in the top. That's your rollover protection device. Um, it goes around you. You sit here on the seat, and it goes, it goes above your head. Okay? So you have rear, and, you have rear lights. Um, go over a couple of these things. We'll go over these things in class as well. Um, some mud guards, sometimes you'll have some mud guards on your tractor, um, side lights, seat belts, um, seats, um, let's see, power steering, um, some decals, some hydraulic steering things, um, three point hitches in the back, um, you know, PTO, there's not a good thing. Not the best of pictures, but the PTO is here in the middle. Um, there's a there's a cover. I got some better pictures that, that'll come up in some other slides. This kind of just gives you the familiarity with some things. Maybe, maybe better used as a um, reference point, um, you know, when you, when you need to look at it. But the basics of the tractor, um, you know, kind of spelled out in this in this slide. So at some point, um, there were some rules that were set um, by some large tractor dealer or manufacturers. Uh, Kubota is one, John Deere, uh, Massey Ferguson, Ford, those are all similar um, large tractor uh, manufacturers. So they've come up with Ten rules, they call them the Ten Commandments, trying to keep away from the um, being any too um, political on that aspect. So we'll just call them rules, that's what they are. Um, but ten rules, you'll see them, like I say, written as Ten Commandments as well, um, of, of, tractor, of tractor safety. Uh, know the rules, follow the rules. These rules are not just made up by somebody. These are from the manufacturers. These people build tractors. They know tractors, they design them, um, and they design these, they design the tractors with these rules in place as well. Okay, so we'll go over the 10 rules. Uh, 
Uh, rule one, know your tractor, its implements and how they work. Read the manuals. Um, training of new employees must incorporate the uh, owner's manual. Uh, tractors are weird um, in the fact that you cannot, most things you can go online, on Google, Google it, and you can get it. Uh, a tractor manual you will have to pay for if you lose it when you, um, if you lose it from when you purchase it. They will give you one when you purchase one. If you lose it, you will have to go buy another one. Um, it's just one of those things. You won't be able to go online and look at the look at the manual. Um, but know the know you know your know your tractor. Know your equipment. Uh, that's that's for every piece of equipment. Um, tractors in particular, because that's what we're talking about. But at the end of the day, know know your equipment. Know what you're operating. Uh, know when you need to service it. We'll talk about these things as well. Um, but all that stuff is in the manual. How to operate it properly, how to service it properly. All those things are in the manual, so you need to be be aware of that. Those of that, that is how you train your employees is off of what is written in that manual as well. Okay, so how to train how to train your operators. Um, you train new and experienced in operators. Uh, point out special hazards um, and how to avoid them. Do not let the operators drive on public roads without a license. Um, have the operator practice in a large level field. Don't practice on some crazy terrain that you're going to get in a bad spot and a pinch and all that type of stuff. Um, you're not doing anybody's any you're not doing anybody any favors in that aspect. Um, once you get accustomed to operating the tractor at a uh, reasonable uh, pace, um, then you can start branching out into some more um, difficult, skillful um, things that you would try to accomplish with the tractor. Uh, trainer, should, trainer should drive around the yard demonstrating how the controls operate. Trainer should never walk, uh, should walk near the tractor as the student drives, giving them instruction. These are kind of some of the things that we're going to do in lab as well. Um, my goal is to go over the tractor, the tractor parts. We have two different tractors um, to go over those tractors in, in, in class and in lab to begin with. Um, and then we'll operate some things um, and, and show you how to do those. Uh, rule two, use the rollover protection device and the seat belt. So that's a good picture of the rollover protection device. Like I say, it's kind of like a roll bar um, and that thing can fold down as well. Um, and, and just to kind of, as you as you see a good um, picture of that, um, you know you can see if you if you if that is up, which it is in this particular picture, if you are in the seat and your seat belt is in, if that tractor rolls over, the seat belt's going to hold you in place, and that roll bar on the top uh, is going to help you from being crushed. Now, if that roll bar is down. This, the, the, the breaking point is kind of right here above the light, and when it's down, your head is going to stick up above these little pieces here. So when you roll it or flip it, when that is down, your head is going to be exposed. So therefore, if you have your seatbelt on, you're going to be trapped in a spot that has no protection. So that's why they don't want you to have your seatbelt on when it's down. So this is kind of what I was saying before. How long do you think it takes for you to roll a tractor? Um, you know, it takes less than a second. It takes less than a second for you to be in a critical point that that tractor is going to flip. Um, you know, that's 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 quick, right? I mean, you are not going to be able to react in a in a good enough manner to to save yourself. Now, if you do not have that rollover protection device on. Your only hope is to not have your seatbelt on so you can jump, try to get out of the way, whatever the case is. Um, but you do not have time to do that. Less than a second is how much time you would have as that tractor rolls over, flips, whatever the case is um, on that, in that aspect. So just keep that in mind. These things happen quick. Um, that's why you have to be familiar with those, to be familiar with what that tractor is capable of doing and it's not capable of doing, all those things. Um, so just a couple of things, another picture here on the right, 
um, a good picture of that rollover protection device. You can see that the fold down is right here at that light. So that's that's like right where your shoulders would be kind of as you sit in this in this seat. So, you know, when that thing is folded down, I mean, your whole upper upper body is is exposed in a, in a flip over. Um, so once again, you know, do not use the seat belt when it is folded down. Um, when, when it is up, the seat belt assures that you are going to be in uh, the protective zone. Tractor here on the left, you know, there's no protective zone there. Um, you can see the um, you can see the seat right here. Obviously, you would be in a bad spot for it, you know, if that's the case. Uh, so rule number three: be familiar with your terrain and your work area. Walk the area first. Use special caution on slope. Slow down for turns. Use the um, and avoid the highway if possible. Uh, be especially aware of conditions at the end of the road. Um, so, you know, just be familiar with your stuff. You know, that's, that's the gist of it. Um, most tractor um, overturn on a side slope. Um, you know, tractors aren't designed to be on a 45 degree angle. Um, you know, it's just, it's just not that type of machinery. So you have to be able to uh, if you have a slope, you know, if this is your slope, whatever, however I can show you, then you, you, you need to run that tractor up and down that slope, not on the side of that slope, okay? So those are the types of things that you just need to be familiar with. But know your terrain, know, know how your tractor operates, um, you know, and try to avoid those, those spots. Um, most tractors are tur overturn on the side. Uh, typical causes include hitting an obstacle, operating on a steep slope, using front end loaders and operating in excessive speeds, right? So if you are on a side slope and now all of a sudden your tire hits a bump on the top side, you know, now you've hit a bump up here and it's, and it's knocked your tractor off. Um, so it doesn't take much if you're already riding on a side slope like that. You hit a bump up here and it knocks it, you're already more than halfway there, right? So it, it just, it doesn't take long and from operators that have experience that have seen it, you know, you can be a very experienced operator, but you don't see everything, right? You can't see everything. And if you, you're running a tractor, most of the time you're running a tractor in an area that's high grass, um, uneven terrain, um, all those types of things. That's why the tractor is, is the right piece of equipment for that job, but you can't see every little thing. Um, so that's, that's why you have to just be careful, um, know what know that these things can happen and, and be aware of the surroundings so you're just not in those in those specific um, instances. Rule number four, never start the engine in a closed shed or garage. I'm sure we've all heard of um, carbon monoxide at this point. Um, you know, if you're going to change the oil, if you're going to you know, let it warm up, you're going to do whatever the case is, you know, open the garage door, um, pull, you know, park it outside, whatever, whatever the case is, um, you know, you just don't let that, um, don't let it inside um, a closed, a closed area running because, you know, it's the, the, the silent killer. Uh, mild symptoms, uh, carbon monoxide poisoning may not be specific or similar to those of viral cold um, or may be nonspecific. Uh, so the headaches, the nausea, the dizziness, the sore throat, dry cough, uh, more severe poisoning can and uh, irregular heartbeat, overbreathing, confusion, um, seizure, loss of consciousness, and death. So, you know, it's a serious thing. Um, you know, shouldn't shouldn't operate a, a a tractor indoors or any other machinery, your vehicle, whatever the case is. Rule number five. Um, keep your PTO properly shielded. So good pictures here, one on the left, that little yellow sleeve, if you will, is around that PTO. That PTO spins at a very high rate of speed. That's what makes this particular uh, picture here is a bush hog maybe. Um, so that's what spins the blades underneath. So that thing is spinning. That actual PTO inside that yellow sleeve is spinning. Um, you know, if you, you want that protective cover on the outside so you don't get a 
a shirt caught in it. That is what the picture on the right is. That little grayish um, thing is, some, is a piece of clothing caught up in the PTO because it is exposed. Um, that is a major, major type of thing. It doesn't take much to get your clothing that you can't get off of you. You know, it looks like maybe that that particular piece of clothing ripped ripped off, and maybe nothing bad had happened. But you know, imagine you know getting your your shirt in it, and you can't, and it doesn't tear your shirt off of you, and now all of a sudden your arm, your leg, whatever is in that is wrapped up in that PTO. Um, like I say, those things happen quick. Uh, you know, having those safety devices in place uh, is going to help alleviate some of those things. So PTO accidents cause serious injury or death. Um, human reflexes cannot compete with the speed and the power of a rotating PTO shaft. Uh, you really don't have time to escape. Um, you know, it's just th those things are, are what is moving um, and turning whatever attachment implement um, that you have. So it's very important that you have the, the, the protective cover, um, that shield, that sleeve, whatever you want to call it on that, on that PTO covering. Uh, how to prevent PTO accidents. Ensure that the PTO shields are in place before work begins. Replace cracked or defective shields. Stop the PTO before dismounting. Um, if... Uh, the PTO spins, um, you know, so I don't even know how you, I don't even know how you dismount it before it stops, but if you're crazy enough to grab something that's spinning that fast to take it off, you know, I don't know, that's craziness. Um, but anyway, you know, stop the PTO before trying to disconnect that PTO. Uh, keep your clothing and your hair, all body parts away from the rotating PTO. Never step over a rotating PTO shaft. Um, you know, you can, don't, don't go from this side of the tractor to that while the implement's running. Um, walk around whatever attachment or implement that is. Because um, that, like I say, that thing is spinning at a very, very high rate. Uh, always use the drive line of the PTO shaft recommended. Um, there's different, you can buy a PTO shaft, you can buy a replacement. Um, so there's different torque, there's different um, RPMs, all those things that that tractor uh, manual will tell you on that PTO that if you get too small of a PTO shaft, you know, it'll just, it'll, it'll break it. Um, so you have to get the right shaft that's recommended for that torque, uh, the RPMs, all those types of things. Uh, so never use parts of one brand um, on another. You know, if it's, if it's been cross-referenced, cross then it, I, you know, then I would say that it would be okay, right? I mean, just because you have a Kubota tractor doesn't mean you're going to find a Kubota PTO shaft. Um, there will be a PTO shaft that is, I don't, I don't know, but there'll be a different brand of a PTO shaft other than Kubota that will be able to be used on a Kubota tractor. Um, but just because, good example on that aspect is we have two tractors at the school, right? So we have a New Holland, we have a John Deere. I wouldn't take the New Holland, it's a smaller tractor. I wouldn't take that PTO shaft and put it on the John Deere because it is it is going to be smaller. That tractor is smaller, uh, different RPMs, different torque, all those types of things. Just because the John Deere is bigger, I wouldn't put it on the um, on the Kubota thinking, thinking that way as well because it can do the reverse damage, right? If you have something that's too big, um, it can grind out the gears in the PTO on the smaller ones because it's too big of a PTO shaft for those gears and those um, RPMs to turn. Um, so you can do damage on that way. And then if it's too big and it doesn't fit right, whatever the case is. So you just have to be, uh, be mindful of that. Um, so position the draw bar properly for each type of implement use. Rule six, keep your hitches low and away on the draw bar. So this is a draw bar, draw bars in the middle, kind of have a ball, uh, you can trailer tow um, with something like that, it's three point hitch. That, three, that, that hitch draw bar, it can be raised and lower because it's basically a, an attachment, um, just like any other attachment that would be on if you had a lawnmower uh, box blade, whatever, 
you know, if you wanted that box blade to dig in, you'd lower it down real well. If you needed it to just skim the top, you've got to raise it up a little bit so it gets to the right level. So the same thing with a drawbar hitch, right? That drawbar hitch needs to be at the right level, otherwise it's going to, you know, tip back and you're going to have a different pivot point on your tractor, right? So um, hitching above the normal drawbar height may tip a tra tractor backwards. So you just have to kind of keep that Keep that in mind when you're towing things on that tractor. Uh, front chassis weights can be used as a counterbalance. Um, so right here in the front is, a, is the chassis weight. Um, yeah, I don't have that good picture there. Um, so the chassis weight would be on the front of this tractor here. So if you had a weight on the front of this tractor as it tipped up, it would bring that front of that tractor down. So it doesn't give you the reason to not put the, um, the draw bar in the right level on the tractor, but it, it counterbalances that weight a little bit more. That's kind of what this is saying. This is that chassis weight in the front. If you have a heavy attachment in the back, you want that counterweight here. Otherwise, there's no weight on the front of this tractor. You know, it'll tilt it back when you put a heavy attachment on it. Um, so whenever possible, back tractors up. Um, same thing for the, the weight and the pivot point on that tractor, right? So if you are um, backing up a grade, you know, that's, that's the proper pivot point, proper weight distribution. If you're going up this way um, and you don't have the proper weight on, Going up this way, I should say, right? If, if you're looking at my hand, if you're going up this way and there's a lot of weight on the back of that tractor and you're going up a hill, all that tractor is going to do is, is go, it's going to pick up. Now, some some weights in the front can help that, but still not the best um, best way to do that. Um, don't put boards down in front of the front drives. Um, if you're stuck in the mud, just, you know, there's better ways to get out of the mud. Uh, rule number seven, never get off a moving tractor or leave it with its engine running. So, you know, shut the tractor off, put the parking brake on, then get off. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, you know, if you are going to leave the tractor running, um, I, what I recommend is that you're familiar with that tractor at that particular time. It doesn't take that much to turn that key off set that brake and get off. Even if you're just going to the bathroom, go in, go to the bathroom, do your thing, come back out, crank the key back up, take the parking brake off and drive again. It's not gonna save you any any more time uh, than to not turn that thing off and turn it back on. It's just, uh, it's just a good practice to get into um, just from the safety thing. When tractors have been left running and the operator is not in the tractor seat, there's a possibility that the tractor will malfunction in some way. Start moving, run over you, bystanders. Um, a moving tractor can also damage or become damaging by objects in the area. Anything can happen. You know what I mean? You could be a great operator, experienced, leave it running, pull the, tra pull the brake, get off, go to the bathroom, Anything can happen. You know what I mean? Maybe you didn't set that brake right. Um, you know, maybe you still have the throttle pushed up and it's still in gear and it just slowly, it is slowly, slowly moving. But by the time you come back after a two, three minute uh, bathroom break, now it's hit, it's hit a slope and it's going down a slope, whatever the case is. You know, it's, it's an accident. It could happen if that tractor was off. Even, you know, it, it, and the parking brake is half set, it, the tractor is more than likely not going to move. So it's just good, good habit to be in. Um, like I say, it's not, it doesn't save you that much time to leave that tractor running. It's the turn of a key. Um, just, it's a good habit to be in. Rule number eight, uh, never refuel while the engine is running or hot. You know, just uh, good practice to be in. Um, you know, same thing with, with, with your car right now. You're gonna fill your car up when it's hot, um, but at the end of the day, not the best thing to do when you pull into the gas station to leave it running and fill your car up. Just it can be done, right? But it's not. It's not wise. Um, so you know when you're 
you're being safe and you're teaching other people and, and those types of things, once again, it's not going to save you any time to turn that key off and to turn that key back on. It's just not. That's just, it's, um, it's just the reality of it. You know, if you've ever gotten a speeding ticket, um, and knock on wood, I haven't got one in North Carolina, but uh, in Florida, I did. And in Florida, they make you go to school. One of the things in school, after I've gotten a speeding ticket couple in Florida, is, you know, they show you all the math of how you're uh, you know, not really saving that much time over the course of however far you're going when you're speeding, right? You know, you're talking about a five minutes, uh, eight minutes, whatever, whatever it is. It's just, it's not that much time. They kind of show you all that math in the driving schools. You know, I, I just, I relate that to this same type of thing. Turn the key off. You know, turn the engine off, you know, when you, whether you're fueling it, whether you're going to the bathroom, whether you're, whatever it is you're doing, just turn it off. It's not saving anybody any time. It's not that big of a deal. Um, so just things to get into the, a good how, um, good habit of. Rule number nine, keep children away from your tractor and its implements. Um, kids don't understand, um. People, you know, older people don't understand um, safety when it comes to things like that. You know, I mean, it's just it's just one of those things. But kids kids don't understand that PTOs are spinning at how many ever RPMs, how many ever miles per hour, whatever the case is. You know, it's just you know they they don't understand that stuff. So it's just it's good to not have them around. Don't play on the attachments. Don't do that type of thing. Um, they just they just don't have that understanding of, of the safety aspects. Um, so just, just be, be, be mindful. If you have kids that are there, kids that are around, use extra caution when backing up, look behind, uh, make sure they're, make sure it's clear. All those, all those types of things. Um, just, just watch out, um, you know, and they, they, they talk about kids, but this is really for adults too. You know what I mean? Adults are the same. You know, whether it's playing on your phone, not paying attention to what Uncle Jed's doing, whatever the case is, you know, be aware of your surrounding. Keep people away from a tractor um, that don't that aren't familiar with it. Um, just just know that. No riders, same thing, right? I mean, this guy, you know, you guys went out, you did something out in the woods out in the back of the farm, whatever the case is, oh, hop on, let's ride. Harmless, yet, you know, in this particular case, right, I mean, probably neither, I say neither one of them, we know the one doesn't have a seatbelt on, but, you know, the driver may not have a seatbelt on, there's no rollover protection, I mean, if that, if, if they just happen to hit a bump, they happen to get a little bit sideways and hit a, hit a rock, and, I mean, it's just a bad, it's just a bad scene, right, um, so it's just that there's only one seat on the tractor, um, and that kind of, you know, like it says, the number of seats equals how many people should ride on the tractor. Um, just, just being, being mindful. It's fun to take your kid out on a tractor and and jump around and do those types of things. Just be aware of the, be aware of the safety measures. All right, rule number ten: never be in a hurry or take chances or do anything with the tractor. Um, there's always time to assume that your next step will, will, will not be your last. Um, remember a tractor is a workhorse, not a racehorse. A tractor is designed for easy maneuverability at low speeds, not high speeds. Uh, slowdowns on turns and curves. Just know what, um, just know, know what your equipment can do. Know, know what you can do as an operator, um, on that piece of equipment, um, you know, we'll talk about it a lot throughout the course of this this semester, this class, right? I mean, there's a lot of equipment that we have at the school. There's a lot of equipment that you will come across in your career. Um, you know, you're not going to know it all. You know, you may be able to operate a tractor. You may be able to start it up, drive it down to the end of the road and back. But, you know, grading, um, grading out a piece of property for, for, for something, digging out stumps, you know, it may not, you, you may not be good at that. Um, and especially, you know, if you're a, if you're a lawn maintenance 
worker. Um, you work in a maintenance company, and all you guys do is mow, blow, and edge um, for the most part, right? You know, you getting you getting on a tractor is not is is foreign. You may be able to know enough about equipment to start it, to to move it, to to do those types of things, but knowing your chance uh, or knowing your experience level uh, with that tractor is important. And, and know know what a tractor can do. Know what that equipment can do. Um, it goes for tractors. It goes for everything. Um, just you know, not, none of it's a, a, a race horse. Um, they are designed to uh, do, do help us do work uh, more efficiently, um, but you just have to be cautious of, of how powerful and how big and how um, uh, unselective they are to who's operating them and, and, and who can, on, on the safety aspect, right? I mean, the tractor doesn't know that you're a newbie riding it. You, you get it too far to the right, too far to the left, too, too much of an incline, it's going to throw you off. It doesn't matter if you're a newbie or a highly experienced tractor operator. It's just part of it. They don't, they, the tractor doesn't know the difference. It just knows where it's at and what it can and can't do. And, and likewise, you need to be able to know what your equipment can and can't do. You know, just remember, um, as you learn, there's plenty to remember when it comes to tractor safety. Do your work carefully and safely so that you leave your work site under your own power and not in an ambulance. Um, leave it under your own power is a much better way to end the day. Kind of like I've said, you know, a couple weeks into it, right? I mean, safety, safety's on you. You're the one that gets hurt. You're the one that, that has issues. Uh, you're the one that has the broken finger, missing thumb, whatever the case is. So just, you know, be mindful. Be mindful of that. Um, you know, operating a tractor, being able to do things, but operating any piece of equipment and being efficient at it and being um, good at it to where somebody's sitting there watching you saying, man, that guy, can, that guy can do that. That girl can do that. You know what I mean? She can, she can operate that thing. It takes time. That's not something you learn overnight. That's not something you gain um, experience with. That, that, that comes with, with years of experience. Um, and that's just one of the pieces of equipment. Is because you can operate a skid steer it doesn't mean you're a great tractor rider or operator, right? I mean, it just it just doesn't. You know, they they work different. Um, so just keep in mind. So I've got a couple of videos, short little videos. These aren't to, designed to do anything. I think I think one of them is a is a sales video. Um, um, I'm not sure what the other one was, but um, you know, these are the two tractors that we have at the school. I want to just show them to you. That way, when we get out to the farm, you've seen these tractors. Um, you've somewhat seen them, you know, in, in not just a generic picture in the in the slideshow, whatever the case is. You've somewhat seen them. They go over a couple of the features on them, so they're good on that aspect. But during lab or before the first part of lab, we'll go over the tractors. We'll go over both of them. We'll go through different parts of them, all that type of stuff as well. But I think it's good to... Um, and I'll try to do this on every piece of equipment that we have, um, just to show you what specific one we have, just so you can see it, um, be familiar with it um, before you show up uh, to lab. So this is the John Deere, this is the John Deere tractor, um, just a short little uh, video. We don't have the cab. Um, so don't be looking for that nice cab that's got air conditioning and heat in it probably. Um, but this is the this is the tractor. That's the three-point hitch. That's the PTO shaft there.
that was the John Deere. Once again, we don't have the cab on it. Get out of that one, that one, that one, that way, that, that, that doesn't <clears throat> come back, um, come back on. This is the New Holland, a little smaller, uh, looks pretty similar. Uh, there's your roll cage, um, protective um, device um, above it. Um, so this is pretty similar. Your, your weight's on the front of the vehicle or the tractor. smaller So three point hitch, PTO there in the middle. You can adjust that three point hitch as it raises and lowers. It's a three point hitch because there's three connections one, two, and there's a third one in the middle that you tie it off on. That's why it's called a three point hitch. See, he's engaged the PTO. PTO's running, spinning. PTO shaft that goes on that will spin as well, obviously, as that PTO from the tractor spins. So that's that one too. Um, like I say, just two quick videos just to show you what you'll what you'll see. Um, you know, when, when when we get out there, we'll go over all of them. Um, we'll go over both of them, and we'll we'll. we'll um, mess around with a little bit of them. We got some gravel out, some dirt possibly. Um, so we've got a couple things that we can try to do with them. Uh, a little bit of grading maybe along the road. Um, so we got a couple things that we'll try to get um, get, get accustomed to. Uh, different different um, attachments, implements, if you will. Discussion question this week. You know, which of the ten rules do you feel is going to be the hardest to follow, and why? Um, you know. There's ten rules. You know what? Uh, what's going to be the hardest as you as you're out in the field? Um, you know, using using tractors, using equipment. Um, you know, just just curious to see your thoughts on. You know, what do you feel would be um, something that's difficult to to keep to keep in check on those on those rules? Just, you know, complete sentences, folks, um, do by Thursday, first initial response, and then uh, two other posts. Um, look forward to seeing you guys um, for trailer, because I'm recording this before our trailer lab, and then looking forward to our tractor lab as well.